Hi, I'm Luke, and this is Paves Garage. In this video, we finish making this carbon fiber fuel filler door for the Pajero Evo. So in the last video, we made a mold of the original Pajero Evo fuel door using one that was borrowed from a friend. If you haven't seen that video yet, I suggest checking it out and I'll leave a link to it in the top right corner now. And once again, I'm a total rookie when it comes to making carbon fiber parts. If you want to see a really professional tutorial, check out the link in the description below to the Easy Composites tutorial in which they make an entire bonnet. So what I'm mixing up here is a special resin designed for resin infusion. It's lower viscosity than normal resins and flows throughout the entire mold fairly easily. Now it's got to be mixed up fairly carefully, uh, trying to get as few air bubbles in it as possible. And like in the last video, I'll leave links to everything I'm using in the description below. So the mold has had a vacuum pulled on it and then a hose is just put into the liquid resin and the vacuum just draws the resin slowly through the part. Since back in the first video, I've been told that I shouldn't have had the spoiler wrap running the entire perimeter of the part and linking the two vacuum bag connectors. I've been told it's better to leave a gap and then that way you won't have uh, big voids in the resin like this. That being said, on this small part it's worked out okay, but it'll probably become important when I get to the roof or the bonnet. Alright, it's been a day or two and we've made a bit of progress. I've uh, repainted Shane's fuel filler door, which he ever so kindly lent to me, being the only other Pajero in Brisbane. Uh, so thanks once again, Shane. It's looking brand new, and uh, yeah, that's the second Pajero Evo I've managed to damage now, so that's not a good run for me. Anyway, carbon fibre piece is ready to demold. You can tell that by that the uh, resin inside these tubes is uh, really brittle, uh, easy to crack, so it's ready to, uh, ready to demold. There's uh, really no tips or tricks or any gotchas to the demolding process. It's just a matter of peeling everything off and revealing the carbon fibre underneath. So right now I'm just peeling off the peel ply, which is the non-stick layer that goes between the carbon fibre and all the layers on top. You can really see what a good job the peel ply does of peeling off the carbon fibre and uh, not leaving anything stuck to it. And just like in the last video where I used paddle pop sticks to help the process of uh, removing the mold from the original part, that same thing helps when removing the carbon fibre piece out of the mold. So as you can see this part's been a bit of a failure. Uh, these bits in the corners look like they just didn't quite become fully seated right in the corner of the mold. Uh, so I'm just sort of left with these voids that the resin has sort of tried to fill. That corner's not too bad. <coughs> uh, then there's this bit here where the, where the resin is delaminated off the carbon fibre. All right, after that complete failure, we're gonna do the whole thing again. Uh, the mold's now uh, been cleaned up. I just went over with a bit of 600 and then uh, 1200 grit sandpaper just to uh, make sure there's no resin left over on it. Uh, and now it's now been waxed pulled off all the, uh, all the old gum tape and uh, now it's ready to lay up the carbon fibre again. Uh, I'm going to be doing two things differently this time. Um, instead of laying the carbon fibre sort of uh, in line with the weave, with the mould, I'm going to be doing it on a, uh, on a bit of a 45 degree angle. Uh, this will sort of help the carbon fibre uh, basically bend and sort of flex into the corners of the mould a bit more easily and hopefully avoid those voids. Another thing I'm doing is using a little bit of extra spray glue this time, especially in the corners of the mould. And unlike last time, I'm really pushing the carbon fibre into the corners of the mould, and this time it seems to have stuck in there pretty well. Another thing which I thought might help was adding some strips of carbon fibre between the outside of the soric and between the corner of the mould.
And then I got the whole mold ready for infusion again. Uh, this time when I was adding pleats, I made them a lot bigger and ended up adding four of them just to really help the vacuum bag sink all the way into the mold and help push the carbon fiber up against the mold wall. So it's been about 18 hours now and the resin should be dry enough to demold the part. Let's hope it's worked better than the last one. Quick ad break. The whole reason that Pajero Evo looks like that and I'm doing any of this ridiculous work in the first place is because I put the thing on its roof partially due to this shock absorber, which didn't absorb any shock and helped put me off the road. My driving might have had something to do with it as well, but shock was definitely a factor. There was absolutely nowhere to buy Pajero Evo shocks at the time of my crash. So I teamed up with an Australian shock absorber manufacturer and we now make a full set of shocks for the Pajero Evo. They're available on my website, pavesgarage.com, and we've got the next batch arriving at the end of September 2020. And also available on the website are those sweet mud laps, which you can get for your Pajero Evo and get some universal fit ones, which should be able to be mounted onto just about any four-wheel drive. Back to the video. So the part has come out a lot better than the last one, but still far from perfect. Uh, big issues are these areas here where the uh, looks like the resin is sort of delaminated off the carbon fiber and stayed stuck inside the mold um, but other than that it's not too bad a few pinholes all over it so what I think I'm going to do now is just uh, mix up some resin paint it over the top and then sand it back ideally with resin infusion molding you shouldn't have to do this at all but since my parts still aren't coming out too well gonna have to do it after that resin had dried, I started sanding it back, uh, but decided it was a good idea to trim off the rough edges before continuing on. This was done with a Dremel tool and a pretty standard cutting disc, along with wearing a high quality respirator and uh, using a vacuum cleaner to suck in any of the dust. After that, I went back to working on the surface finish of the part. I started off with some 600 grit sandpaper and worked my way up to 1200. A common problem I've seen in lots of carbon fibre is that the resin doesn't fully infuse and leaves lots of pinholes throughout the entire part. And these pinholes are just about impossible to fill with resin or paint. So I just decided to start layering on layer upon layer of clear coat in the hope that they'd start filling up. After six or seven layers of clear coat, some sanding, and some more clear coat, and some more sanding, I was left with the finish which looked alright, so had some pinholes in it, but I was willing to accept it. So I just went outside and stuck it on temporarily to see how it looked, and I think the results aren't too bad. There's still plenty of room for improvement, but there's so much more work to do on the Pajero Evo, it's going to be coming up in future videos, so I'm going to leave it as is for now. So that's the end of this video, but before you go, let me tell you about what's coming up soon. We've got videos in the works about making these mud flaps, installing shock absorbers, and more work on the roof which is being turned into carbon fiber, as well as a video where we look at the differences between the standard Pajero and the Pajero Evo. So to make sure you don't miss out on those, subscribe to the channel, share it, give a like, and all that sort of good stuff, and we'll see you next time.